Hey guys, Tater here again. Hope you're doing well. So today, I've been asked to walk through uh, HUD customization and some other of the more unknown or not really explained uh, character options. So let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is for HUD control and modifying your HUD so your, your UI, for example, looks like mine does. So instead of having your uh, class power gauge sitting up here, um, it's gonna you, you can move them. So as you just saw, you can press escape, you can press the system, you get a HUD layout. And then from here, you can move pretty much anything around however you see fit. Um, so to activate, for example, hotbar 10, um, you can click on it. You can then UI element settings or you can uh, right click on it and that is now activated as you can see in the background there there it is hotbar number 10 right click on it again and it turns off what else what the other things that you can do are you can set the orientation you can double stack it so 12 by 1 it's all 12 uh, buttons in a row double stack six each row four of three and then you can go vertical so three of four uh sorry three rows of four two rows of six or one of twelve again for example you can boost its size up to 120. so now you've got these massive buttons so now it's if you're if you're a clicker and personally i don't agree with it i don't like it but i don't have to personal choice but if you're a clicker and you need something big and meaty to click on it's there for you to click on. No dramas, no questions asked. Also, if you right click on the number that appears next to it, out in the un-HUD, non-HUD modifying window, you can also modify it there. A little bit, a uh, little bit more finicky that way, but to each their own. Uh, we'll go back to HUD 10, pop it down to 100. You can also change the transparency of it. So let's go back to 140. Save, close. And instead of it being as pronounced as it was before, it's now just a little bit, it's more see-through. So under the HUD layout menu, there's a whole bunch of different bits and pieces that you can change. For example, if you've got the default UI, for example, something akin to this, your scenario or your MSQ scenario guide is going to be up here in the top left hand corner. Personally, I don't like having it up in the top left corner. I feel more comfortable having it over here on the right hand side of my screen. Same with the duty list, which is all of your quests uh, and their completion, their various stages of completion. You'll notice I've got target info bar. Now target info bar, and if we go into it, the target info bar is actually the cast bar of uh, the enemy or the boss that you may be encountering. You can change the size, the transparency. You'll notice that I've, I've bumped the target info bar up to 180%. As a tank, I kind of need to know when that's doing its thing, when when the big band is going to cast uh, Tank Buster. Gives me a bit more of a prompt uh, to slap down a mitigation. From here, You've also got your two alliance lists over here. You've got another hot bar up here that you can wheel and deal as you see fit. Your party list. Uh, the current list of enemies that are active in combat with you or your party. Down here, main menu, gill, inventory grid. So if you weren't quite sure what those little green dots were in the bottom right hand corner, that's what they are. That's just your inventory grid showing you how full, how empty, uh, how bloated your inventory may be staring at some of my other compatriots. From there, you've also got your server info up the top. Now that displays your uh, current local time, Eorzea time, or the server time. You've also got your, you've also got your, uh, see, local time, LT. That's my local time. It's 4.47 in the afternoon. You've also got your uh, latency. However, it doesn't give you a hard and defined uh, 
millisecond ping time. It just tells you whether it's sending, whether it's receiving. Some of the other things that I've been requested, as was discussed earlier, some character config options. Now, for those of you who are uh, new and doing your dungeon roulette, your daily, your, sorry, your daily roulette, and you're sick and tired of having to, you've seen the same cutscene over and over again. You're sick and tired of having to uh, press escape. Yes, click skip. Well, there's an option for that under your character or character configuration here. Also, you could press K to put, uh, open it up. So you can skip playback of previously viewed scenario cutscenes. The transportation. So, uh, for example, the, uh, what is it, the Zeppelin? The, um, the airship. Multiple housing cutscenes. If you bump in and out of somebody else's uh, house, you can turn, toggle these on. So you, if you've seen them once, you'll never have to click skip ever again. It just does it by itself. Under character, you've also got other options such as display headgear, which you can do down here under the hide and display headgear. You've also got the visor function. If your headpiece allows for a uh, visor animation, um, you can hide and display your weapon or shield if you have one, looking at the paladins. For example, on, off, on, off. And it's there. And it's off. You can auto sheath your weapon when not in battle. You can toggle how long it takes your character to realize that they no longer need their sword out, their gun blade, and so on and so forth. You've got uh, your idle animation. So if you just want your character to sit there, to stand there and do something, you can randomize the effect and you can toggle how long it takes for this to come into effect. So here's the part for those of you who don't need so much flashy bits and pieces happening from your other party members or even yourself for that matter you can toggle all of these battle effects off for example show none the only there's no particle no special flashy bits and pieces it's just the animation plays versus So with this, you can toggle your entire party's flashy bits and pieces off. If you are a tank and you need to be able to see what the boss is doing, you could possibly be persuaded to show limited or show none. Uh, preferably, I'd go show limited because you want to be able to see what your healers are throwing down on the ground. Down here in the item settings, you've also got such things as inventory interface. So instead of it appearing like this, as it would in default, where you've got your individual bags, yep, bits and pieces, yep, there's your key items, you can go here and open all. Boom. All your items right there. One screen, one big, beautiful box. You're not having to cycle through all the individual bags and try and figure out what's going on. Now with the retainer, it's, it's the exact same as your inventory uh, interface. So there's, if you like having this big open box, I would just set it to expanded. Don't have to worry about it ever again. Something else that I've noticed, personally for me, when I do a whole bunch of story quests and, or daily roulettes or just story dungeons, uh, or well, not trials because they don't give gear, uh, but story dungeons, I've noticed that my armory chest is getting kind of clogged. So instead of... Oops. So instead of my, in, my armory just getting clogged up, where I completely forget that I've got bits and pieces in there that I probably just need to get rid of and sell, you can uncheck this box. So instead of storing them in your armory chest, they will now store inside your inventory. Makes, makes selling junk a whole lot easier. Now if you're selling, trying to sell a whole bunch of other bits and pieces, for example, unique items, Arm, uh, armor, die if you if you have them. I'm unsure about that one. Uh, but if you're trying to just bulk sell a whole bunch of stuff and you just you want to click and drag, click and drag, click and drag, you can uncheck unique and untradable items. And instead of it kicking up a little uh, prompt saying, "Are you sure you want to sell this?" it'll no longer say that. Same for uh, meldable. Same for spirit bound. Okay. UI settings still under character configuration. 
One that has annoyed me to no end, and thankfully I figured it out. You can turn off all those annoying little uh, recommendations and play guide prompts. You know, the ones that come over on the sides of the screen saying, Hey, here's some achievements or here's some quests we recommend you go do while you play today. Well, you can turn those all off. All of them. Pretty sure the achievements one will still pop up um, for quests nearing completion upon zone change. If there's a quest, uh, if there's achievements related to that zone, I'm fairly sure that'll still happen. Over here in HUD, you've also got a whole bunch of other little bits and pieces that you can get rid of. Turn off, turn on, if you so desire. For example, if you don't want to know how much XP you've got, you can turn it off. No dramas. If you don't want to know how much health you've got and Magicka points, you can turn them off too. I, personally, I don't know why you'd want to turn them off, because as a tank, it's mildly exciting when my healer decides to play ping pong with my health bar, but hey, we all got to get a kick somehow. Also over in under HUD, this is where you can choose which time you want displayed above your map. Server time. And Eorzea time. And there they all are, and it will tell you exactly what it is. You can see the Eorzea time is just slowly ticking up, because game time is uh, world time versus play time and real time. Very different. Personally, I turn those off. I don't need to know what those are. You can also display your current world name. If you don't really need to know what world you're on, you can just turn that off too. Declutters your UI a little bit more. Now the limit gauge, I would leave that on because that that's those three bars or single bar or two bars that appear um, when you're in a dungeon. Kind of handy to know, uh, especially if you're a, de if, if you're a uh, damage dealer, I would recommend keeping that one on. Main scenario guide. Well, guess what? You can turn it off. All with the click of a button. Boop, boop, boop. Okay. Now, if you'd like to learn how to get rid of your name above your head, you can just turn that off here. Never. Gone. Poof. Gone. Don't need to know your own name. I leave it on because there's handy little icons that appear to the left-hand side of your name. Now, there's one of them. That will, it's a red uh, circle with a line, squiggly line going through it. That'll dictate that you are about to lose server connectivity. You're about to drop. Or you've just got a fairly weak internet connection for the moment, and the server's trying to catch you up. It doesn't affect your, uh, it doesn't affect you too bad, unless you get kicked uh, or dropped from the server, in which case, then it's a pain in the ass to log back in. So if you're sick and tired of seeing your party members' names be a slightly darker shade of blue you can always just click over here under the others under the party members tab and you can pick a new color for your party members names to show up in for example this blue could be this blue it's entirely up to you what color you want the names to be represented represented as it's a handy function for those who unfortunately suffer from a form of color blindness under others you've also got the color of your alliance members names you can show their names during battle, or not at all, if you don't need to know them. You can show their full name, surname, forename, abbreviated, or just the initials. Once again, entirely up to you. The HP bar is shown only when it's below 100%, because otherwise, do you need to know what the HP is if it is full? I don't. Same same for all your friends, the other, uh, the other player characters that are running around in the world. Over here under NPCs, this is where you can toggle off the minion names. So I've got it when targeted, so if I see a cool minion running around with somebody and I want to know what it's called, you know, I just have to click on it. I don't get my screen cluttered up by hundreds of names by every Tom, Dick and Harry and their companion. In this case, Koala Joey. So now we come down to hotbar settings. Now over here, under the hotbar display settings, you can choose to show display recast timers which is a number that is actually that will actually appear 59 58 57 well, I can turn that off and now you just get the visual representation of your ability becoming full again and being able to be recast personally I keep it on I like to be able to know how many seconds I've got to live if I've already blown all of my mitigating abilities in which case it's a problem but that's a healer. That, that, that becomes a healer's problem. 
Here you can turn off the hotbar cycling button, which means you can no longer cycle your main hotbar. You can display hop, uh, get rid of the hotbar numbers altogether. Enable drag and drop repositioning, which means you can no longer drag your hotbars around. And once again, as we've already seen with the right click under the UI configuration, or sorry, the HUD layout, uh, I should say, you can also turn them on here if you need them. You can also choose which orientation or how thick they are or how skinny they are. The pet display is another bar that will appear probably over to the uh, left hand side of where all my bars currently sit. Um, at this stage, I can't show you because I don't have any pets that I use and I am not a summoner. So here under cross, you've got the enable cross hotbar. Now this is more for your um, uh, controller uh, players. So right trigger, left trigger, you can set RB. Um, I'm not 100% on board with the controller as I don't use one, uh, but I'm sure that if I did, it would be fairly easy to get the hang of how to turn it on, uh, how to utilize it. But if you want to use a controller, this is where you come to turn it on to enable the hot, uh, the cross hotbar. And once again, under custom, there's more controller settings for you to be able to tinker with over here. Now, remember, if you change something and you can't figure out how to get it back, just hit the default button and it'll reset the entire thing. It'll un it'll unmess up what you've done. Down here under log window settings, now this is all to do with your chat log over here. So, for example, if you're an adult and or you're a minor and you really don't care if somebody's swearing, you can turn the profanity filter off. It's on by default. Uh, you can turn on display error, message, error messages when an action fails. Once again, happens all down here in the chat window. You can choose to display the name, once again, full, surname abbreviated, forename abbreviated, or just the initials, however you feel. Enabling the lip sync during chat, that means as you type and talk in slash say, your character's mouth will actually move. It's much of a muchness. Uh, I wear a helmet all the time, so I don't really get to see my character talk. So in case you wanted to have another tab, so for example, here's your battle, uh, battle tracking. So this, all this does is it just, it keeps track of what abilities you've used, whether they hit, how much they hit for, how much they, if they missed. If you'd like to have your normal text, so seeing what everybody else is saying, plus have your battle, you can just grab it and drag it, and you can have it on there at the same time. Same, same with the event. Now the event is what's going on in the world at the same time. And you just hit X to bring them back. You can also make a new tab. Log details. Once again, you can change how big the font is and how transparent it is. Plus, you, if you want timestamps to be able to track when somebody said something, you can turn that on all under log details. Log filters. So, for example, I've just made log four. Now, if I just want log four to display, uh, we'll say yell. So all of the yelling, so if I just slash y, hey all, I miss you. See, under general, it's there. Under log four, it's also there. It's not under event or battle, but it is being tracked under log four. You can set it for your novice network if you are in the novice network, which I am not and never was. So under the log filters, You've not only got the basics, say, yell, shout, tell, party, alliance, free company, PvP team, you've also got to access to feed in your cross-world link shells, the current world link shells, your emotes, the custom emotes. You can filter out certain things that are happening to you under battle. You can filter out certain things under your battle tab that are happening to just you, your party, your team, companions, so on and so forth actions failed against you all these lovely different things fantastic to know under announcements you've got all of these other bits and pieces system messages own battle system others battle system it's very customizable and this this whole ability to customize as you see fit is why i am okay with not being allowed to have 
UI add-ons, so, such as uh, World of Warcraft and its old Spartan UI, which I still believe is still around. Um, or uh, any of the UI modifications that Elder Scrolls Online allows you to do. This is why I'm okay with this, because it's so customizable that you don't need any of that. There's no requirements for any of that. Also, something that I learnt uh, not that long ago. So I'm just going to move my gill up here so you can all see it fairly front and center. Gill, and we're just going to bump that baby up to 160. Save. Close. Okay, so my gill is right here on screen. I am not a rich player by any stretch. I am actually quite broke. However, if you right click on the gill, it changes to then display for this session only, so if you log out, it will reset to Gil, but it changes to display how many flame seals you've got sitting there, how much MG MGP you've got sitting there, and then once again, back to Gil. So also, if you, once again, if you click on it, it'll show you what other currencies you've got going on. Go build a script, tombstones, wolf marks for PvP, and the ventures. So guys, that's it for the UI and UI management and how to modify your UI. I hope this has been helpful to at least somebody. If it has, let me know down in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe as it does help the channel out. Don't forget I also stream here on YouTube. Thank you all very much and I shall see you all next time.